Good morning, Patria family. It is uh, so good to have another Sunday together. No matter where you are, where you are seated, uh, we are the United Church, the Church of Jesus Christ. Um, so wherever you are, I'm hoping that you are enjoying a great morning so far. If you are in George, South Africa, it's overcast and raining and such a beautiful day. It speaks of God's covering and His love. And uh, so we're really hoping that you guys are going to enjoy a beautiful service with us this morning. Um, we wanted to keep this live as a, as a live, we, um, not a, a pre-recording. We want to keep these moments live so that what we are going through um, is at the same time. And it is, it's a Sunday morning, it's the gathering of the saints, and even though we can't see one another, the Holy Spirit is the one that connects all of us. And so this morning I just have, have once again just this renewed appreciation for what Christ has done um, on the cross and for the mysterious plan, the mystery that was hidden for ages and generations, Christ, the hope of glory, that said to us that He is the connection between you and me and all of us as Christians worldwide um, because of His Holy Spirit. And so this morning we are united in spirit and in truth. And that truth's name is Jesus Christ because He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And so therefore this morning what I would love to do is to start off by prayer um, before we go into um, any of the services or uh, any of the, the details of the service. Um, I want to just remind you guys and, and ask you once again. I'm going to put up the, um, the screen for... Um, let me just get to that. I want to put up this screen. So if you can please take a selfie or a picture of your screen, let us know where you are, uh, show us yourself, um, please WhatsApp it to this number. We are building a testimony and a story. Um, the testimonies that comes in are beautiful and absolutely amazing. During this week's um, Instagram uh, daily devotionals and the videos, what we've done is we shared some of the testimonies of what is happening through our public beneficiary organization, Stelios, um, which is basically the extension of um, Patria. And this is us being church in the streets of George. And uh, we spoke about how many thousands of people are getting fed um, and how amazing it is to see what happens when church is united. Before anything else happens, I want to just say thank you so much to each and every one of you. Um, we want to say thank you so much for your time um, in prayer, in standing together, even just going through the daily devotionals together. Thank you so much for letting us know what it means to you. Thank you so much for sharing your testimonies. Um, I have been in tears so many times because of testimonies that are coming in and people just saying to me, thank you so much for what you guys are putting out. It is absolutely our delight um, to put our daily devotionals, and I'm looking forward to this week's. I'm, I'm going to be doing the written devotionals again. I'm really looking forward um, to this week's devotionals. Before, um, before we continue with anything, I want to just say thank you so much for all of the financial contributions to both Patria as a congregation in tithes and offering, and also as an offering and donations into Stelios as our public beneficiary organization. It really does mobilize church. And guys, what is absolutely amazing is to see how the Holy Spirit is encouraging all of us not to hold on to our lives, not to love our lives more than we love Him. And how everyone is just getting into and behind church and to say this is who we are, united. And so I just want to say thank you so much. This week I have sat praying over every single seed that is currently coming in. I have such an appreciation for every single person who is donating and who is sowing into. And thank you so much for the combined effort of us being church. Um, you guys are absolutely amazing and uh, we value every single one. Please make sure that you send us those photos. It is always beautiful to see. Um, so I want to pray for us um, this morning and um, 
I just want to make sure that we honor God for who He is and uh, just say thank you so much that the Holy Spirit connects all of us um, this morning. Abba Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for caring for every single one of us, Lord. I want to pray over every heart that's going to either log into live streaming this morning and every person who is currently watching this and also every person who is going to watch the recording afterwards on YouTube. We pray an anointing and a blessing over the service. I am your instrument this morning and therefore I pray that whatever I say, Lord, will bless your heart, will glorify your name and that you will help us be the, the church, the bride of Jesus Christ this morning. Thank you so much for connecting all of us in spirit and in truth. Thank you that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. And that we can be true worshippers because we know that we are not flesh. We live in flesh and that this is a temple. And therefore this nature has, has died. If we have been baptized into Jesus, our old nature is dead. And our new nature is a divine nature in Jesus Christ. Seated at the right hand of our Father in heavenly places from where he rules over everything in heaven and on earth and under the earth. We love you. We value you. We appreciate who you are, Lord. And thank you so much for a beautiful service. Amen. Amen. So guys, what we're going to do this morning is I'm going to play a, um, a video that was pre-recorded by Raymond. Um, this is just going to unite us in a, um, in a worship song. And what we wanted to do is just say, keep it real. We want to keep this as authentic as possible. Raymond, thank you so much for putting out this video. And um, this morning, this is just uniting us. Look at the words and the description of the song. This is one of our Patria songs. And let us be united in spirit this morning. So as the song plays, um, allow the words to minister to you. But not only that, let us pray together for one another during this time. Any person who might be struggling at this moment, um, because of the compassion of church, what we want to do is we want to assist and help as far as we can. So please also, if there is any need, let us know so that we can um, assist you guys. So there is the number, just once again, if there is any need um, that, that is currently arising, any food shortage, any person who is in, in need, please let us know so that we can assist and help in, um, in who we are. So, this morning, let us enjoy a beautiful time of worship, and uh, here goes Raymond. Good morning, Patchy family. It is great to be with you again in this moment of, of worship and song, although it has to be over video for now. And good morning to the people from around South Africa or around the globe. My name is Raymond, and it, it is good to serve you in this moment. And there we are as a family or as an individual again, looking into this live stream service. I want to encourage you, let's close our eyes for a moment. Uh, this week in, in the devotionals, we saw an amazing weapon we have been given by God. And, and that weapon is our mouths and the breath that He breathed into our lungs. So this morning together in our living rooms, over a video Let's give back the breath that God breathed in our lungs. Let's give it back to Him with praise, with adoration, with worship, and with song. Let's take a moment and, and let's focus on what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us this morning. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. I 
Lord, at your name, darkness flees. Lord, at your name, the blind can see. The dead will rise, the captives free. At your name, at your name. Let's sing higher. Higher than any other, deeper than any ocean, wider than east is from the west. Your name is stronger. Tower sweeter than all I may desire. Lord, at your name, the darkness flees. Lord, at your name, the blind can see. The dead will rise. The captives free at your name, at your name, Lord, at your name, the lost are saved. You set us free, the ransoms pay. You gave your life to make a way. Every knee will bow, every tongue will vow, every knee will bow, every tongue will vow, every knee, every knee. Bow. Every tongue will vow, every knee will bow, every tongue will vow. We proclaim, every knee will bow. Every tongue will vow, every knee will bow, every tongue will vow, Jesus Christ is Lord, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, at your name, darkness flees. Lord, at your name, the blind can see. The dead will rise. The captives free at your name, at your name, Lord, at your name, the last are saved. You set us free, the ransoms pay. You gave your life to make a way. Worship you, Jesus. The name above all names. Jesus, we worship you this morning. We worship you.
is such a beautiful song and I, every time that I read the words and I listen to the lyrics and I think to myself that is exactly what Christ has said Christ has said that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is king and that he is Lord and when I think about that reality it is absolutely a confident statement in a God that knows exactly who he is I'm not sure if you've ever thought about this but um, I am so glad that God is God and <laughs> it's a stupid statement I know it's, it sounds silly but I want us to think about this he is so constant I'm not sure if you've ever looked at your own life and seen how up and down emotions can be our our constant is God and if we look at our God as not only Abba Father as a loving Father but Christ the King um, as we spoke last week the King of Kings Lord of Lords Jesus Christ and all of that with the link directly to him as God Father and Son through the Holy Spirit which connects all of us he is so constant and so this is my thought is that God is so constant and that God is so confident in who he is he is not swayed by my emotions he is not swayed by circumstances God in no way looks at us and worries or stresses as we do God is absolutely an amazing constant and it is so beautiful to know that we can be linked to him through the Holy Spirit and therefore he becomes our constant and this morning what I want to speak about in the sermon is a very specific angle and so this is a I just want to get to this one and uh, do the switch from uh, main screen to um, the split screen this is what we're going to speak about this morning I want to speak about our eyes um, this whole week God has been speaking to me about um, the encouragement to others to think about what you look at and what you listen to and this is a constant speech and a constant talk that we have not only in Patria but as church we are constantly putting this out that we make sure that we think about what we think that we think about what we watch that we think about what we share that we think about these things it is extremely important and this morning there are different angles that I want to take as to looking at eyes and into our eyes but before we go into it we recorded a brand new video um, this week um, through motivational and truth and so I just want to play you this video and I'm hoping that this will bless you so let's have a look at this video In the Word of God, it's made clear that our walk is not by sight, but by faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. That is Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God. We must, however, also understand that when God speaks about faith, He also refers to what we see. He does refer to our eyes. Our eyes are the windows to our soul. And therefore, his scripture says, And if your eyes are dark, meaning that if what you look at, what you see, what you allow into your eyes, the movies, the videos, and whatever it is that you do on browsing and internet, the eyes are the windows to your soul. And it says, And if the eyes are dark, oh, how dark the soul. But if the eyes are light, oh how light that soul is. We must make sure that we understand that when it comes to our faith walk, it does refer to what we see as well. And even though we do not walk by sight, our sight is very important to God. So what do we look at? Is our eyes dark? Or do we look at the things that God wants us to look at? It's so important for us to see the correlation it's so important that we do understand that whatever we allow into our eyes does determine at the end our faith, the purity of our lives, the purity of what we look at and see. We must make sure that we get this. 
Christian. We are being called to be holy and pure, for God has said, Be holy, for I am holy. Purity leads to our faith being pure, and then we can stand on the promises of God. So, I hope that you enjoyed that. These videos we make so that you can share it into the world and these are short messages. Last week we did King, this week Eyes. This is so that we can share this with the world and it helps us not only in evangelism but it helps us in discipleship. If we want to bring a specific angle to someone and say, hey listen, have you ever considered this? Have you ever thought about this? If someone says that they're really struggling but yet what they do is they view anything and everything that is in this world, anything and everything that is to view, it really does not help our faith. And therefore we need to consider holiness and purity in what we allow into our eyes. And therefore this morning what we want to speak about is eyes. And, uh, and I want to make sure that we follow this this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up the first scripture and I want to use small illustrations as we go through this. And I want to also just mention that God has been speaking to me about this for so long. I remember in the beginning days when, um, when faith started making sense for the first time, there was a time that um, as a young Christian, my faith was very wonky. It was very um, much determined by my circumstances. Um, uh, my faith was up or my faith was down depending on my emotions. As long as things went well in accordance to what I felt was going well, um, my faith felt strong. But then I actually realized that, you know, through circumstances, my faith was actually weak and that my fear was actually very strong. Now, remember how I went on to this um, journey of how God helped me kill myself. Now, that is still happening. This, this is a beautiful journey and we're speaking about that growth many times. And that is in our context, James 1, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let your endurance grow for when it is fully developed, you will be strong in character, ready for anything. Our context to that scripture and both that and 1 Peter is that we grow from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. And that is important and that is something that we must look into. So as Christians, we must understand that God helps us grow. That is progressive righteousness. Our righteousness has been paid for. We are right with God. We are in right standing and we should be in right thinking. But he helps us with that thinking. And so I remember when I prayed specifically in the beginning and I went, my faith is not strong enough to stand during that one period. And what happened was Satan came at me through depression. That depression was so strong that a spirit of suicide came for me. Now, I was contemplating taking my own life, and I've shared this with um, the congregation many times in both sermons and also teachings in Kingdom School. It was a very dark time for me because we were, almost, we were newly wed. Um, I felt like a failure as a husband, couldn't make it as a young engineer, salary wasn't big enough, and now we're studying. Very difficult time. And I remember how I looked at my faith and I realized that my faith wasn't strong enough. And therefore what happened was my fear was way stronger than my faith. And my fear overtook me. Because of the things that I allowed near me, and I want you to get this, because of what my eyes have seen and what my ears have heard, it determined how I felt about things and how I interpreted everything and anything that happened to me. So I didn't consider that God was busy with me as well. I only felt that I was the failure. And therefore, I didn't consider that my battle wasn't against flesh and blood. I didn't consider that it was against spiritual forces. So I did not consider the lies that Satan has already planted in my life and that he is just poking at those lies. And therefore, what happened was Satan came at me and he brought me into a state of oppression, which to me interpreted as the emotion of depression. 
I sat in a depressive state of darkness and my soul felt so dark. And so what happened was I didn't change any of the habits of what I was looking at. I didn't change any of the habits in my life. And what happened was I remember how that suicide came at me and right, right, right at the end, the day that I planned to take my own life, God came through miraculously and he helped me through it and he helped me not to continue in taking my own life. I remember him sitting at home and I said to him, Lord, if this was not the end, you need to please help me see what this is going to look like. And I remember how the Holy Spirit spoke into my life. Now, I didn't know his voice as well as I do today, but I sensed, I sensed certain scriptures that I remembered from being a child and being taught these scriptures, foundational scriptures that I've been taught as a child, as a Christian in a Christian home. We went to church on Sundays and therefore I knew all the stories. And it was as if the Holy Spirit took all these stories and brought them forward to me. It was as if he put these on display. So I just had the sense of this hope. That's when I went into scripture and I, con I connected faith with hope. And all of a sudden, I looked at Hebrews 11 verse 1, which was a scripture that my mother would always teach me as a younger child, especially when I had to go out and I was afraid. Hebrews 11 verse 1 is the definition of faith. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. So whenever I know that I'm in a situation, I don't see the outcome yet. I don't see it. It's not in my bank account. It's not in my marriage. It's not in my relationships. It's not in the circumstances. I don't see it yet. But when I look into the Word of God and He promises me peace, He promises me provision, he promises me the best. Why? Because his word says he will make everything work out for the best for those who love him. His word says, do not worry about what you're going to eat or drink or where you're going to sleep. The heathens worry about these things. Look at the lily in the field. Look at how I dress that. He says, you are far more precious than a mere lily. How much more will I not care for you? And so I look at that and and, and, and as I looked into it, I realized one thing. Hebrews 11 one says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance of things hoped for. That's when I realized I was hopeless. I was totally and utterly hopeless. Because I could not see the outcome. My eyes were not fixated spiritually. My eyes was fixated on what was happening fleshly and so because I did not see my circumstances changing I did not see my bank account change I did not see certain things that I was that I that I thought was going to give me peace and this was the process in which I realized all Satan has to do to rob our faith is to hit at our hope and if we look with eyes that is so accustomed to the world and to the flesh, then my hope diminishes immediately. And now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. If my hope is gone, my faith is gone. And therefore, this morning, it is my hope that through the sermon, whether the sermon is for yourself, or whether the sermon is for a disciple you are journeying with, or whether the sermon is for a family member out there, no matter who the sermon is for, it is my prayer that this will help us put this out there and say, let us consider the following. Our eyes are very important in God's context. I want to come to this first scripture. And the scripture is Matthew 6, verse 22 to 23. And I want to read you the scripture. Your eyes is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eyes is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eyes are is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. This was the scripture 
that the video, the short video, was based on. Your eyes is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. This next slide I have used numerous times in different illustrations. And I know that this morning maybe this slide is not for us tapping in at the moment. It might be that someone is looking at this and you've ne never considered this slide. But I want to put it in in context with this scripture. So look at this. A lie doesn't become truth. Wrong doesn't become right. And evil doesn't become good just because it's accepted by the majority. This is such an important statement. Because the world says something is fine. Because everyone is doing it. It doesn't make it right. Wrong stays wrong and right stays right. There is a kingdom of light and there is a kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of light outpowers the kingdom of darkness. And therefore what we must know this morning is that God in the kingdom of light has overcome the enemy. And he is our constant. And therefore we can constantly with hope in our heart for a better tomorrow, look into tomorrow. We don't look into our current circumstances for the coronavirus. As this week, we received a message. Now, this is not fact yet, so hear me in this. Please hear me. This is not fact yet, so please do not take this and spread it because it might be fact, fake, um, uh, false news and fake news. So, I'm giving you a message that I received that has not yet been approved by government, which has not yet been communicated officially. But this week, looking internationally at the coronavirus and quarantine, we received a message that helped us prepare for a time such as this. And this message was, it might not be possible to gather in masses again until level zero. We're at level four at the moment in quarantine. And the anticipation is, if we do think about this, and if it is true that we won't be able to come together in masses again as we used to until level zero, the anticipated date is September this year. So I looked into that and we, Satan is the father of lies, but God is the father of light. I looked into it and I said, Lord, this is what I want to state. I want to state the following is that we will not bow our knee to a virus and we will not bow our knee to a world system. You have put us above everything else. And Lord, we thank you so much that your church will flourish. We will grow during times such as this. We will grow in discipleship. This is why we are putting out videos, daily devotions, these sermons that are recorded and put on our YouTube channel so that you can distribute them. Send the link to someone and say, look at the sermon. This is what we as a church is currently looking at. This is to family members. This is, these are to friends. Anyone out there, maybe your neighbor next door, to say, hey, listen, I have this short video that I want to share with you. It's on Instagram or on Facebook where you guys can ask for it and we can forward it to you. We can distribute these messages of hope. We can bring forth hope. This is who we are. So we don't look at the world. And when we see disciples, they just don't get it. This is an extremely important statement for him to get. A lie doesn't become truth. Wrong doesn't become right. And evil doesn't become good just because it is accepted by the majority. Why? Because the eyes are the windows to our soul. And this is so important that we get this message across. If the only things that you are watching or looking at or considering is what the world has to offer, you will have a totally hopeless life and depression will become your friend and that demon will ruin your life because the demonic comes at us in very cunning and subtle ways. 
I want to go on to the following one. And this is Matthew 18, verse 9. And if your eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Now, I have specifically chosen this picture. And yes, that is Facebook. And the millennials will go, well, I don't serve Facebook. But Instagram and social media as a whole is owned by this one company. We must look at this. And this to me says that Jesus is the living water. In the middle of an oasis, in the middle of, of, a, of, a, of a desert, he is like the oasis. He says, anyone who drinks of this water will not thirst again. Will not thirst again. I remember that woman at the well that said, who are you? You know, it was Father, Father Abraham who dug this well. Jesus said, whoever drinks of this well, they will go thirsty again. But whoever drinks of me will never go thirsty again. For I am the living water. Through the Holy Spirit, I am the living water. Now, this is the song that Raymond sang this morning, sang this morning, because that song speaks about that every tongue will confess and every knee will bow that Jesus Christ is Lord. And therefore, the message that we carry as Christians is extremely important. And I don't always think that people consider how our eyes come at our faith. And the reason I'm saying this is because what we look at at times might cause our hope to diminish and if we are hopeless you can't have faith for faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen a lie stays a lie and if you believe a lie and you operate out of that lie it steals and robs of you and then what you will do is you will look at circumstances in the immediate and you will work that circumstance into your way of interpretation and that will rob you of your true identity and who you truly are you are a son of god almighty and sonship is established in what christ has done for us when you accept that and you draw near to the father the father will draw near to you and then he says to us that he is the living water in jesus christ and the holy spirit will fill us with a peace then it comes in and says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding, a heavenly way of just having peace and knowing that his plan is eternal. He looks into our circumstances and says, Christians, I will not only help you through this, I will elevate you through this. I will elevate my church I will increase business. I will increase income. I will increase the situation so that others will look at you and say, surely that is a nation blessed by God. That is my proclamation. And so the one thing that happened to me specifically was I had a way of looking at the world. I had the way of looking at this specific picture in my life. And what I was busy with was what the world was busy with. This was me. I was busy with the world. So going back into my testimony, what happened was, in my testimony, God came in and said, Pierre, you speak as the world is speaking. You do as the world is doing. And therefore, you wonder why your faith isn't strong. I was doing as the world was doing, like a slave to my flesh. I was dragged after everything of this world. And therefore, the cares of this world made me anxious, stripped my hope, and I couldn't believe. This is so important. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. I love that scripture in Hebrews 13 verse 6. Make a note of that scripture and please go and study that scripture. Because Hebrews 13, obviously because of the number, comes after Hebrews 11. And the whole chapter of Hebrews 11 is a chapter dedicated to faith. It was by faith that Abraham, it was by faith so we go, it was by faith that Noah, it was by faith that Abraham, it was by faith that. And it goes through all of the legends in our family heritage. Have you considered that? It's your family. Everyone that was born of Father Abraham, anyone as a descendant that believes like Father Abraham, anyone who chooses to believe with their free will to give their lives over to Christ, 
becomes a slave to righteousness, right thinking and right standing before God. And therefore the one thing that had to happen in my life to overcome my fear with faith was this, my tongue. My tongue started confessing differently the day that I decided to look at different things. I turned on my spiritual eye. I decided to put away the television. I decided to put away the worldly things, to not consider the things that the world is considering. Not In my case, I stopped reading newspaper because the way it influenced me. Now, I know, I'm not saying that reading newspaper is evil. I'm just saying, if it does cause you to fear rather than to have faith, if you don't see it from God's perspective, I stopped watching news, I stopped reading a newspaper, I stopped watching television. We threw away our magazines at that time. I brought in only scripture. We stuck our hearts and our eyes into scripture. And scripture became, from written word, logos, became rhema. The more we see it, the more the Holy Spirit revealed the word of God. And therefore I realized the following, that this Bible, the written word, was not given as a law, it was not given as rules. I started realizing that all this does is if my eye is spiritually tuned in, this speaks about Jesus. Jesus is revealed. And therefore, the hope of my glory, the hope of my faith, the hope of my future, the hope of my circumstances, the hope of my finances, the hope for my family, the hope for my marriage, the hope for my children. Everything is restored when I look into this because he says, I have, I have, I have. And all you must do is believe that I have. It is finished. Every promise has been yes, has been made yes and amen. And it started changing the way that I looked at everything. And it's so important because then, because our eyes were changed to the way that we looked at things, and my eyes started looking at me when I saw myself in the mirror as a son, accepted by a holy father, loved by a caring father. When I started looking at myself in the mirror and I accepted that I am a son, all of a sudden my life changed at how I looked at things. My identity was established in Jesus Christ. My sonship was chosen by faith because it came against all of the fears and all of the depression that came at my life. And God restored hope. And because my hope was restored, now faith is the substance of hope. The evidence of things not yet seen. And all of a sudden, my life started becoming a living testimony of a living God and circumstances came our way and circumstances only became another spiritual testimony of his victory as they come it just gives us another reason to testify of what he has beaten of what he has overcome my emotions might go a bit wobbly but then i remember james 1 and 1 peter and as i remember james 1 Whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. I look at it and I go, Lord, you actually want to tell me that my character can still grow? Thank you so much for sending me these circumstances, Lord. Help me through them. I feel weak. Strengthen me, Lord. Grace becomes the empowerment. It becomes what it was intended for. The Holy Spirit, Christ, the hope of glory in me. And it takes Jesus to be Jesus. And how he comes in and says, let me show you the better way. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 says the following. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, that's in accordance to Isaiah 64 verse 4, the things God has prepared for those who love him. We have not yet considered. We cannot even imagine what is to come. And here on earth, what God has said to us is He will take every circumstance and turn it out for the good 
for those who love him. And therefore, no matter what the circumstances, our hope is always in Christ, as long as our eyes are fixated to who he is. Listen to this last proverb before we end the service. Proverbs 17 verse 24 says this, Sensible people keep their eyes glued on wisdom, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. I look at the scripture and it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. May it be that we're looking to these scriptures. Proverbs 17 verse 24. We're going to 1 Corinthians, going to Matthew. We're looking to these scriptures this week. If you forgot the scriptures, go back onto our YouTube channel. I will quickly browse through and go back on slides. So capture these. We look at these scriptures and we go, Lord, help us. Help us tune our eyes spiritually to who you are and what you've done. So that we don't look at circumstances. For sensible people keep their eyes glued on wisdom. And wisdom is not just knowing truth. Wisdom is doing and applying truth. It's doing what you know is right. So the scriptures that we looked at was 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. It was Matthew 18 verse 9. It was Matthew 6 verse 22 to 23. Now we'll go back into these scriptures. Matthew 6, 22 to 23. Matthew 18 verse 9. And 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Ending off with Proverbs 17 verse 24. Can we pray together? Abba Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we celebrate the victory on the cross. And we thank you so much, Lord, that you will open our spiritual eyes to see the absolute truth of our identity in you. You have accepted us as your children through faith based on what Christ has accomplished. Metanoia. Repent. Change the way you think. Thank you for helping us, empowering us, change the way we think so that our mannerisms, our identities and our characters can be established back with the hope of a glorious future because faith is the substance of things hoped and the evidence of things not yet seen. For without faith it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently serve Him or seek Him. Lord, may that become our reality, our seeking after You, our switching off the worldly system, switching off what our eyes see in this world, and fixating our eyes on who You are. For the eyes are the windows to our soul. And Lord, that's what we pray for. It's a soul that is filled with light, because Jesus Christ is the light He's the way, the truth, and the life. Help us minister this into others' souls. Help us minister in a time such as this where others are hopeless. Help us take these videos, the daily devotionals, the scriptures that we go through, anything and everything that we put out as material, Lord. Help us use these things so that we will go out to our neighbor and say, Hey, have you considered this? Let us pray into their lives, Lord, and help us minister to a needy world with great compassion. Amen. Guys, I want to tell you this. I love you so much. Whoever you are at the other side of this camera, whoever is watching the screen, I love you so much. You are loved for you were fearfully and wonderfully made. May God bless your day in such a beautiful way. May the Holy Spirit be that connection that reality, may you look into his eyes with purity and holiness. And may you see his love for you in such a unique and brand new way. I love you guys. Enjoy an amazing week. And we are looking forward not only to the daily devotionals, but also to everyone who does Kingdom School this week. We are full of hope and full of courage. You guys are amazing. Be blessed. Take these links that we are putting out on YouTube, send it out to people, minister into their lives and help them through it so that we can raise up an army of believers in a time such as this. You are absolutely amazing.
Enjoy your time, I'm switching over, because in 10 minutes time we're starting the Afrikaans service. Enjoy, be blessed.